Hello everyone, I'm the Whiskey Enthusiast, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm stealing a plot, I'm stealing it from uh, Jeff from G Whiskey. Cheers brother. Uh, it's five whiskeys for five whiskey snobs that uh, come to your house and uh, want to drink your whiskeys in a snobbish way. Which we hopefully don't have these guys in our lives, but uh, we might. We might come across them. So these are a guide to what you can give them. And all of these are from my bar. I'm not going with uh, mythical bottles or, you know, the hard to reach ones. What I can provide is what I'm doing. And also another uh, steal from him, uh, from Jeff, is I have a mystery dram. And uh, if you stick around till the end of the video, I'll reveal what it is. So without further ado, shall we begin? The first one is the Sherry Lover. The Sherry Lover wants all the fruity and nutty and uh, sweet notes a Sherry Cask uh, impartation gives on a whiskey. Uh, sweeter the better, as far as I know from my Sherry Lover friends. So I have, I'm gonna have three options for all of these categories. So for the Sherry Lover, these are my three options. Uh, I have the Ockintosh and Three Wood, link up there to see. It's a uh, bourbon or also MPX Sherry Cask maturation. It's incredibly sweet molasses. It's not the most complicated of whiskies, but it's pretty good. Then I have the Nomad, which is an interesting one. You can't actually call it Scotch whiskey. That's why they call it Outland whiskey. It's uh, finished in Sherry Cask in Jerez. So uh, it goes actually from Scotland to Spain to finish the whiskies in a bodega in Spain, but it's made by Richard Patterson, also incredibly sweet and very uh, caramel forward. And then we have the Aberlour Abuna, uh, which it comes in batches, it's uh, cast strength, this one is at 59.8, this is batch 67, and uh, matured in Spanish Oloroso Sherry Blood, so it's a full Oloroso maturation. So these are my three sherry whiskies that I think my sherry lover friends, uh, sherry lover snobs, would like. It's hard to uh, beat and I think any one of them, or at least one of them, would make them happy. Now, next category is complete opposite. It's the peat freak. We've all been there. We've all had our um, peat cravings and the peatier the better, the punchier the better. So. This, uh, these are my choices for uh, to impress the Pete Freak snob. Number one, Arbeg, Cory Reckon. This is bottled at 57.1% ABV. Uh, it's just a Pete lover's dream. It's hefty, it's strong, peppery. It is Arbeg at its uh, most uh, wild um, style. Second one, I have the Lafroig Lore. I did the review, I'll put it up there. I don't know why I'm even, yeah, but there you go. That's the bottle. Yeah, beautiful bottle. Again, a bit of an untamed version of Lafroig. Sure, you can go with uh, quarter cask and 10 uh, cask strength, but a younger Lafroig with some sweetness in there and uh, hefty peat, it would uh, really hit the spot. And my third one is the Bunahaven Fischl 2021 Moin Bordeaux. It's an eight-year-old Isla and um, it's finished in red wine Bordeaux cask but actually this is an eight-year-old and I think it spent about uh, five years in the Bordeaux cask so would you call it a finishing? Yeah. But it is beautiful it's it's really hefty peaty with nice wine flavors it's, it's just beautiful so I think these three would uh, really make any kind of a peat freak happy, I would say. Mm. Now, the next category. Oh, my mystery dram is good. <laughs> now the next category. Sorry about this, I have limited space. The next category was the luxury lover. The luxury lover wants something that's given to him presented in a very luxurious way, whether it be the style of the bottle or the box or the story. Uh, Jeff, I think, interpret this as it feels luxurious, but um, also he, he said looks luxurious as well. But um, I, I kind of took it from 
the bottle perspective because you know if he's a snob if he's uh he she is a luxury snob uh, i think they're gonna look at appearances a lot so i have again three options number one has to be the signet put the link up there i mean the bottle itself is fantastic the cap is amazing it comes in an incredible box heavy the bottle is so heavy just look at that and it tastes luxurious as well it's just different it hits different this signet is a beautiful mocha tiramisu in a bottle what i call my second one the royal salute 21 in a porcelain decanter and it comes in an incredible box as well I'll put the link up there um it's just handmade porcelain really hefty robust it has an age statement on it as well 21 and it just looks really really classy so this would make them happy as well and my third one will be hibiki harmony master select this also comes like in a golden box which i threw away i don't keep boxes do you guys i don't uh but just look at that bottle with the water mills and the sakura trees uh it's just a beautiful bottle anyway and it tastes nice so i think these three presented in their boxes would make uh my luxury snob friend very very happy next category is the age snob now these guys want something with an age statement and want something high so this could actually be in there as well 21 you know it's a pretty pretty good age for a whiskey the problem with single malts especially you go above 18 the prices just go crazy even now 18 is uh, a bit too much and so I have uh, again three options I have this one the SMWS 18 uh, it's a single cask so I think if 18 is low for the guest uh, I can maybe entice them that it's a single cask but I know 18 is there because they're super high right now I, I find it high then I have Valentine's 21 again like I said the Royal Salute 21 could be it but uh, this is 21 years of age I think that's pretty you know high that should impress someone but what I find is if you stay in the single malt territory uh, you're gonna spend a lot of money for anything above uh, 18 but if you go to blended or single grain category you can get a lot of good stuff for a fraction of the price Hence, this presented in a beautiful box. This is Weems Malt 1988 30 year old single grain. And it's um, matured in ex sherry buds as well. So, this would definitely impress them. I did a 40 year old whiskey uh, review, I'll put the link up there. Uh, but, you know, with single grain whiskies, look at that. It's. Uh, no color added it's full maturation it's a single cask as well you know it's uh, 56.2 abv it's 30 years of age i don't know who's this this is gonna impress anyone uh, not just the age freak no that was the peat freak age snob whatever so these are my picks of from my bar that i would uh, give to a age snob uh, but uh, hopefully uh, I won't have any of those guys coming around here now the last category which I think was the hardest the purist the purist wants no cask influence whatsoever they want the distillate to shine they want whatever comes out those stills to be as unhindered as possible try the I mean they will just drink the new make if possible well I can give them a new make I have a few of them here which I love tasting new makes, but obviously we're giving them whiskey. So I have again three options. Now, number one, Jeff did that as well, the Bladnock 11 2021 release. He said there's some wine casks in it, but uh, I checked and it is just aged in bourbon casks. So this would make them happy. And Bladnock's distillate is weird, yeasty, robust, and uh, memorable. So I think they might enjoy this. My other one would be Kleinelish 14. I did a review up there. There you go. Um, you don't get too much information about the casks, but it just feels a 
clean whiskey. It just feels you get the Kleinelish distillate taste uh, through 14 years. I mean, Auburn 14 could also work. If you don't have uh, Kleinelish, that could work. Because I don't think uh, there's much other cask involved other than next bourbon. You don't know, but maybe there's sherry. You don't know. But my pick would be Singleton 17, the Azure Special Special Releases of 2020. Uh, this is from um, exclusively from Refill American Hogsheads. So American Hogsheads is made from American barrels. Uh, so it's just one size up, 200 to 250 liters. And um, it's better for maturing older malts and it's refill. So uh, whatever that was in those casks before, because it's refill, it has less, it's gonna impart on the whiskey less and less when you refill it. And when you get a bigger cask, the interaction between the wood and the liquid is going to be less. So you're going to have less cask interaction. So this lid will shine through. And actually, this is fantastic. The thing is, this is very expensive in Europe. I don't know why, but in my market in Turkey, this is the same price as a black label, Johnny Walker black label. So in UK, in Johnny Walker Princess Street in Edinburgh, back in September, now it's probably more increased. This was 120 pounds. Um, in Turkey, this is 38 pounds. I don't know why. So I grabbed a lot of these. I have a backup, 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 backup. And I'm very happy with this. It's 17 years, uh, single, well, not single cast, but cast strength. And it's really nice. It's really pretty. So guys, this would be my five whiskies for the five whiskey snobs. Now, what do I have in my glass as a mystery dram? I have the Balmore 18. Now, I think this uh, kind of covers all the bases. It's PT. I mean, it won't help the peat freaks, but it's PT. Uh, eight stated, high age, 18. It's cherried. Sherry lovers would like it. It's luxurious. It's 18 years old. It's Beaumar from Isla. It's not cheap. Uh, it's not pure. <laughs> so, <laughs> four out of five. Uh, but it's really nice. You don't, it's 43% ABV, but, uh, you know, if you drink it just to enjoy it, you're gonna like it. It's one of those whiskeys that you don't need to dissect it. Do you know, I know, I know it's not uh, craft presented, uh, but it doesn't matter. It's one of those whiskeys that when you smell it, the peat is in the background, like Highland Park would. Walmart is also gentle peat anyway, but the sherry notes come forward. The bourbon notes come forward. Nice oak tannin, 18 years of nice, gentle maturation. There's a little bit of spice, but it comes in uh, in the form of very nice sweetness. Ah, you can smell it. It smells like uh, cognac, even. Mm. And then the palate is coastal, maritime, sweet, salty, briny, and um, caramelly, chocolate, dry, nutty. Beautiful. Right, guys, this was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. Jeff, I hope you liked it. I hope I've done you proud in this list uh, by stealing it. But thank you. Thank you for giving me um, the opportunity to do this. Guys, I'll see you on the next one. If you liked it, please hit that like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It means a lot to me. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.